Hello everyone, this is Midwife on the Man with Rose Alexander. It is great to be here again. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You're an awesome God. Father, we just bless your name, Lord God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is to be praised. So we just thank you for allowing us to enter into your courts with thanksgiving and praise, and we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. And Father, as we go into the Word, Lord God, that you will cause your Word to open up, cause a light to come on in someone's life because of your Word, not because of anything else, but what your Word has to say. Because your Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we just give you all the glory right now, Lord God. That when they receive the word, the word will be received with meekness, the engrafted word that is able to save our souls. You know, we know that your word will not go out and come back empty, but it will fulfill what it was, come, it, it was sent out to perform. We give you glory for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Look, let me just give you a quick, uh, a quick announcement. Then I'm going straight into the Word. You know we're still having our winter prayer seminar. This will be, this month will be our first phase. I mean our second phase because um, January we did our first phase of winter prayer seminar. And, and February the 8th we'll be doing the second phase of winter prayer seminar. And of course we're going to do our last one in uh, March. But we don't want to talk about that yet. We just want to, you just want to take one month at a time because uh, it is, the point of the seminar is like three months. But it's one, one Saturday out of the month, which is the second Saturday in every month, okay? And so we're doing it that way to give you a break in between there, give you time to study, give you time to practice prayer. Practice the prayer practices that you, you learn. Now you can practice them in between there. And when you come to the next class, you're going to probably be asked to use them. All right? So just remember, February the 8th, it's going to be, that location is 100 University Street. That's in Magnolia, Arkansas. 100 University Street in Magnolia, Arkansas. We're going to be in the Magnolia Room 205, and that, that room is located in the Reynolds uh, Campus Center on the campus of SAU. And so that's, a, that's the easy way to describe it. It's on the campus of SAU, and you're going to come to 100 uh, University Street. You're going to come to room 205, which is the Magnolia Room. I tell you, this is what I want you to do if you want to register for that class. We want you to register now um, so that you can get the, the uh, discount. And this, uh, this, this month is a bigger discount than last month. If you register now, you register for that class for $20. But after the, after the end of this month, you will have to pay 25 And so if you want to register now, I want to give you an easier way to register. You're going to text me your email address. You're going to text to 318-510-0382. Uh, You're going to text me your email address. And when I get your email address, then I'll send you the invoice saying that you can pay $20. But it's going to say down at the bottom until uh, the end of this month. So you need to take care of it now unless you want to wait to the end of the month and pay $25. That's, that's fine. It's just that I wanted to give uh, all uh, everyone an opportunity to get that discount as well. Once again, if you're going to be a part of Winter Press Seminar, February the 8th, you're going to want to text me at area code 318-510-0386. I am super, super, super excited about it because I have a, 
a, a, a there's there's those who's coming coming this month that didn't come last time, and I'm telling you, uh, I met a I met a family uh, just on my tra travels. I was going out of town, and I met this family, and I'm telling you, they're gonna be a part of this seminar, and I'm super excited about everybody. But what I'm saying is. Uh, I had a very, very good time with these sisters that was going on their sisters, sister uh, vacation. Like you know, I like to do. I like to go to them, go on the sister vacation. They was going on a sister uh, vacation, and I gathered me four more sisters. I got it. I got. I got more sisters than y'all do. Y'all, let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. I'm telling you, our subject. Our subject for today is, will the real church please stand up? Let me say it again. Now, I have, I have thought about this many a time because of the church, the body of Christ, is sitting down. They're not standing up to be who God called us to be. And so, my... My, my statement today in, in the form of the subject is, will the real Christians, or will the real church, I'll say it that way, will the real church please stand up? We're going to go, we're going to go to uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, uh, and, and, and I'm telling you, just give me, just give me time on this message, because I already know that this message is not a one part. You know, I, I, I hardly ever do a, a, a one part message. It's always one, two, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase three. Uh, but I'm saying to you, I know right now that this message is more than one part. And I only see two parts at this point. But just get ready for part one, which is today. Part two will be next week. Just give me time because this this means so much to me when I talk about the body of Christ. Because we are, we've been sitting down, is what I'll say. We've been sitting down. So let us go to 2 Chronicles 7.14. We have, I was thinking about it, we have not been standing up for the gospel. We have not been a really good um, earthly representative. You know, we're, we're God's representatives on earth, the body of Christ, the church, Christians. We have not been good earthly representative because we are so uh, divided. Let us go, let us go to uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14 and it says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. I don't know nowhere on earth that the land don't need healing. Everywhere, I don't care where you live, somewhere in your community is a place that need healing, that need to be delivered, that need to be set free, that need to be groomed. But he says, he says, if my people, which are called by my name, let me do this. Let me, I, I like the, I like the NIV uh, translation of this same scripture. Second Chronicle 714, I just read. Uh, but then I want to read it in the NIV. It says, but they make themselves humble in my sight. They pray and look at me. See my face. And look at me. And they turn from their evil ways. Then I will listen to them from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. After all, they are my people. 
Then it goes on to say in the 15th, the 15th verse, it says, Now my eyes will see them. My ears will pay attention to their prayers. Well, I thought, I thought you told me that God hear everybody pray. God is a God of faith. You have to come to him in faith when you come. You can't come to him any old kind of way and think that he hear you. He will turn a, as a matter of fact, he, he can't hear anything but his word and, and faith. He can't hear that. God is a God that can't hear that. That is why, that is why he will, he will answer you if you pray his word back to him because he has to respond to his word. He says, he said, I stand over my word. Y'all know I said all the time. God says, I stand over my word to watch it come to pass. He's looking for you to speak his word, but more, more than that of what I'm talking about today is that the church, the Christians, the body of Christ is the people of God that he's referring to in this scripture. And he says, if my people, which are called by my name, <laughs> will turn from that wicked way, humble themselves, humble themselves first, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. But you're talking about the church of God. Why are you saying they got wicked ways? Because just because you become a part of the body of Christ or just be, because you become God's people, that does not mean that your, all your ways are, has been transformed. You have to be transformed by the renewal of your mind and them old ways will become uh, transformed into God ways. But... But until then, he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, we have some ways in the body of Christ that really, I, I, honestly, that really make the body of Christ look like the weakest thing on earth. In other words, we make the body of Christ look like the weakest link. But the body of Christ is the strongest on earth. Uh, the body of Christ, Christ's body, which is you, which is me, or whoever have accepted Jesus as their personal Savior, they become part of the body of Christ. We're strong. He said that we should be strong and do great things. He said that greater is, is he that's in us than the devil that's in the world. He said that we can do many and mighty great things, but why? Why we're not doing great and mighty things? Because what he just said, you got to turn from your wicked ways. We have, we came into the body of Christ with some wicked ways. And we never, we never took the time to let God transform us by renewing of our mind, by the word of God, because we won't get into the word. We're just glad that we're in the body of Christ. And somebody told us all that you need is to be born again and you're okay. No, you're not. Your spirit is okay. And if you die, you go to heaven. But you can't just sit there and say that everything is okay because you still have to live on earth. And you still have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The scripture says, uh, be not conformed. First it says, uh, present your body to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto us, which is a unto him, which is your reasonable service. Then it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you came in and you got born again and you never thought to, you never had someone to tell you, you need to re renew your mind and, and continue be being saved daily.
continue changing daily. So now you in the body of Christ and you got all this stinking thinking. I said you have all of this stinking thinking. You got all these wicked ways, but you, you're wondering why you can't get where you live, your community is still messed up. And you're wondering why hell is breaking loose all around you. It's because you're part of the house, but you messed up in the house. You still messed up because you never took the opportunity to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So he says, if you turn from your wicked ways, these are the things he said he would do. If you would turn from your wicked ways, he said, then you would hear from heaven. He says, he says in the other translation, he said, then I will listen to them from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. After all, they are my people. Then he goes on to say, if you turn from your wicked ways, pray, seek his face. Turn from, your, turn from your wicked way. He said, now my eyes will see them. My ears will pay attention to their prayers they offer in this place. I have been really, really and truly disturbed. It's a very deep, hurtful disturbance. Because I can see uh, through the eyes of faith. First of all, I can see through the eyes of faith by seeing through what God's word is saying. And it's supposed to be much better. Earth is supposed to be much better. Because he says he's going away. He says he's going away. When he, was asc when he ascended, and he sits at the right hand side of the phone. He said, I'm going away, and I'm going to send you another comforter. He should teach you all things. But, but in addition to that, he said, you shall do greater works because I go to the Father. And he's telling the Father, he's interceding for us, uh, standing in the gap for us, uh, telling God, look at Rose, look at jo Joe, look at Johnny, look at, look at your, your neighbor. Look, God is telling, look at the person that using the word of God and Jesus is there saying, now, Father, you promise. These are your promises, God. So you have to do it for Rose. You have to do it for those that are praying your word back to you. And so what I'm telling you is that you won't turn from your ways, but yet you want God to straighten everything out around you. But he said, if you will turn from your ways and seek his face, he will heal the land. So I am grieved because the land where I live is messed up. And I guess maybe I can say it's much more messed up because I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing the um, spiritual, sp seeing with spiritual insight. But then there are those who go on with life as usual but when you can, when you pray, God intensifies your sight. When you pray, he intensifies your hearing. So you hear different when you pray a lot. As a matter of fact, when you, when you pray, the Bible says you build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you charge yourself up. You have a keener sight. You have a keen uh, 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 hearing, so you hear in the spirit more. So you agree more because you know that things do not have to be the way they are. In my surrounding, people don't have to be the way they are, but they are. In my surrounding, the town could be more physical, physically fit than, than it is. Be, but and I, I know it, it don't take spiritual sight to see that. As a matter of fact, my sister said the other night, one, both of them are physically blind. But she said it. She said it, that it was so obvious what, what she was talking about. 
is that a blind man can see it. So I'm saying to you, it is very obvious that something is not right in our land. Something is going wrong in our land. I'm talking about the, the, the great big God that we serve. And when we read the word, and he says all these precious promises that he has for us, then why is it that we is not living with these promises that he has promised us? Because if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, we have some very wicked ways. We have some wicked ways, and I want to bring out this. Not only we have wicked ways, and we're so we're so somewhat mean to each other. And I'm talking about the people of God. We're so mean to each other. We're actually very wicked to each other sometimes. We can, and no matter what you think, no matter what you say, I just want to think I need to say this. No matter what you think or what you say, that 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 white sister is my sister. If you're born again and we got the same daddy, heavenly father, that's my sister. That black brother is your brother. But yet you got all of this racism going on over here. And you think God is pleased. No, he's not pleased. You got all this division going on in the body of Christ. Of course, I know just because your church is a Pentecostal, your, ch your church is a Baptist, your church is a Methodist, yours is non-denomination. I know that that doesn't mean you divided. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying uh, we are in different locations. You may go to a Pentecostal, I may go to a Baptist, they may go to a non-denomination or a Methodist church. But if you have accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you're part of the same house. And if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith. But, 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 but look, look, I need to bring this out. You and I are a house divided. When we act the way we act because of race, God never said anything about he, he, he preferred more, one race over the other. He, he have not said anything about it. He preferred one, one gender over the other. I like men better than I like the women. The women, the women is nothing in my sight. God never said that. But yet you're a Christian and you're actually saying that. And if you didn't say it out of your mouth, you treat me different. <coughs> you excuse me. You treat me different, but you, then you treat my husband as as a man and a woman. You treat me different. We both we both are. are, are as a matter of fact, we both got ordained at the same time. But as a minister of God, you treat me different than you treat him. But that's because you're part of the house divided. And that house divided, the scripture said, a house divided will not stand. So then you wonder why you don't see the bigger blessings. You, you wonder why you don't see the major breakthroughs. Because we're running around a house divided. In the same house. But yet you treat me different. Then we're divided with a whole lot of different tradition. <coughs> Y'all excuse me. I should have bring, brought me some water or something. But uh, the house divided can't stand. He says that. But we want God to keep everything together. But he tells you that a house divided will not stand. So when you uh, won't come out of those traditions, but yet you want God's word to still go forth, when he tells you your tradition have made the word of God of none effect. You take, you taking the effect out of God's word because of your tradition. Oh, well, how? There, there are 
we'll say the tradition that, well, it's our tradition not to have uh, music in our church. Gosh, what kind of church? Uh, who, who told you that? But there are churches, and I, I'm not saying that they're not, they, are, they have not accepted Jesus. I'm just saying your tradition or the things that you're keeping in place that that is causing God to be of none effect, then uh, you're part of the house divided. So he says, he says that we do all kind of things to keep the house divided, but yet you, you want him to keep it together. Well, where is God in all of this? Well, why God didn't stop him? He tell you to stop him. He told he told you to come from the among those kind of <coughs> teaching and traditional things. And so, <coughs> <coughs> so when you when you're so focused on <coughs> when you're so focused on. We are, I was talking about, and I have to close, but I'm going to close it up within the next three minutes. Um, we have, we as the body of Christ, have made the word of God an effect by our tradition. Tradition um, called the word of God to not work. Let's say for an example, let's do this. There's a tradition that says in, in, in churches, in, a, in certain in certain denominations, which I'm not saying that that church is not a, a God church. I'm just saying that that church tradition have made the word of God a non-effect. So it affects me even though I'm not a part of that church because people don't usually say what kind of, you know, what, you know, what your church is all about. They just say what church you go to or, or what, you know, what your church, is your church okay? But when they go into a church and that kind of tradition that you don't want no drums, you don't want no musical instrument, you, you call everything the devil, everything is not the devil. When you don't do what God is asking you to do, he says, he said we could create an atmosphere he says, make melody in our heart to him. As a matter of fact, he, he allowed David to play an instrument and the evil spirit left out of people. He says, make a joyful no noise with the string inf instruments, the, the drums and, and the pursuit and heart. So now you, your tradition has made the word of God, know, make, making it look so weird. And so there's a whole lot more tradition that we do. Uh, one of the and, and, and I usually I used I used to talk about laws, customs, and tradition. They they turn the word of God into something God didn't say. There's a law. There's a law uh, that says at, at that particular time. There's a law back then that says a woman should be silent in the church. The woman should be silent in the church. That was the law back then. That was a custom. That's, a, that's part of the law, custom, and tradition back then. But then what happens when you try to bring it to this day? This dispensation is that you bring in something that God, that God had nothing to do with that. That, that is a tradition of men. That is a custom you put in there. That is a law you put in there. Even though it's in the word of God, but then the same one that wrote, that wrote that down, and it was Paul. Paul, very, very good, wrote two thirds of the, of the New Testament. He's the one that says, let the woman be silent and so on and so on about the women questions. <laughs> but he's the same one that said, I thank my God I know now there is neither male nor female, bond nor free. So you all that is so hung up on color, you all that are so 
hung up on male and female. A God don't call a woman to do nothing. Oh, a black person can't do nothing. Oh, I can't stand a white person. Something is wrong in the land. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, what did he say? Now my eyes will see them. And my ear will pay attention to their prayers and the prayer that they offer in this place. So ask God to turn his eyes, to turn his ears towards you, but you first got to turn from your wicked ways. Church, talking to me, talking to whoever else, who, if the shoe fit, wear it. Because I'm tired of being a church and people looking at God or it, of the church as something bad when it's an awesome place to be. It's a beautiful place to be in, in God. And I heard somebody said the safest place to be is in the center of God's will. But when you got all these people around, around you that is full of tradition, that is full of laws and custom, what kind of what kind of law is it and custom that it is that says, uh, well, I don't like worship music. I don't like, I don't like praise music. I prefer the hymns. Nothing wrong with the hymns. But don't, that's just a custom you got. That's just a, a, a tradition you got. Don't try to make it be something that God said and put it part of the church. I'm so glad you thinking like that, you're not the pastor of the church. You're not thinking that. So you'll mess up the whole body because the head will mess up the whole body with that kind of thinking. So I'm saying to you that I ask you, will the real church, the one, who, the church that is so lovable, the church that, 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 that embrace humans, it is so much more that I need to say, but that's, that is why we're talking about for part two. So next week, we're going to go back into this because there are some more uh, traditions, tradition, uh, tradition and laws and custom that keeps the house so divided. But God really want to move, but he has to move through his body. And his body is divided. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now. Father, your word is forever settled in heaven. It will not go out and come back void. But it will accomplish whatever it was set out to accomplish. Father, I give you glory, honor, and praise for allowing this word to fall on the good ground of your children's heart. And, and pull on them to come from among the things that they, they, they have been entertaining. And we give you glory right now. In Jesus' name, amen.